Hi guys. So glad you are watching the next read aloud. All right, and let me show you what it is. So the next read aloud is this. So the title is The Runaway Walk. And this is the walk that we'll be hearing about a lot in the story. Um, it is written by Ying Chang Compestin, illustrated by Sebastian Serra. All right, and up at the top corner, it says a Chinese New Year tale. All right, so from the cover, you can definitely see that this um, book has to do with uh, the Chinese, Chinese people, Chinese culture. So it's always great to read books uh, from different cultures. You get to understand different people. You get to understand their, um, their traditions and their customs. So it's great to build that background knowledge on how different people do different things, right? Um, so from the cover, remember first thing that we always do is looking at the cover, we're gonna decide, we're gonna figure out what we're about to read. So from the cover, you can see it's written out as a cartoon and a walk, which is a, a type of a, a bowl is running away, right? And so obviously this is Fiction, fake, fantasy. All right. So when we are reading fiction, you know that the author's purpose of that book was to entertain us. So we're reading it for fun, for enjoyment. You know that it's important to pay attention to the characters, what those characters say and do, so you can determine their character traits. Are they nice? Are they caring? Are they giving? Are they mean? Are they stingy? From what they say or do, you can you are able to know those character traits. What is the setting? Where and when is this happening and why is it important? So, of course, since this has to do with the Chinese culture, it makes sense that the setting is going to be is going to be in a Chinese uh, setting, in a Chinese place, Chinese community. Um, what is the problem in the story? And then how does that problem get solved? What is the solution to that problem? All right, and the other important um, um, literary element, story element to pay attention to, by the end of the story, you wanna be able to come up with a theme. What was the lesson message or moral that the characters learned? What did the author want you to learn? And we'll talk about that theme at the end. So you think about what was the lesson of this book? I'll tell you what my thoughts were, and you come up with your own as well. All right. I hope you enjoy the story. It was a really cool one when I read it the first time. I really enjoyed it. One Chinese New Year's Eve, a poor couple sent their son Ming to the market. Trade these last few eggs for a, big, for a bag of rice, said Mama Zheng. Then we can make some stir fried rice to share with the neighbors. It won't be much of a celebration again this year, Papa Zhang said with a sigh. You'd think that by working for Mr. Li, the richest man in Beijing, we would have enough to invite everyone over for the New Year's feast. Ming hurried off eager to do his mother's bidding. It saddened him to see his hardworking parents being cheated by the greedy Mr. Lee. As he walked, he daydreamed about what a real feast would be like and how nice it would be to have just one new toy to share with his friends. These are really great illustrations in the book. So you heard the character traits, the parents are hardworking and the people, the person that they work for, Mr. Lee, is greedy. So there are some of those character traits. A small old man stopped Ming near the market. Hello, son. I see you have some eggs there. I will trade you this wok for them. No, said Ming. I need rice. Besides, your wok is rusted and has no handle. Just then, the walk sang out. 
Boy, boy, trade for me. I am more than what you see. Ming had never heard a wok sing, he thought. This wok is magic. If it can sing, it must be able to do other amazing things. So he made the trade. The old man sauntered off, chuckling happy to himself. Hmm. So what do you think that little chuckling was about? Hmm. So the boy didn't do what he was told. You think that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing? Ming's mother wasn't happy. Why did you trade for this battered old wok? What are we going to cook in it? Before Ming could answer, the wok sang out. Mother, make me shine so bright and you shall have food to share tonight. See, Mama? said Ming. It's a special walk. Let's do what it says, said Papa Zhang. We're all hungry. So Mama Zhang washed and polished the walk until it sparkled. Then she set it on the table. To their surprise, it rolled off the table and out the door. Where are you going? cried Mama Zhang. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's wife I go sang the walk, and it briskly hopped down the road. So they got it all cleaned up, and then it took off down the road. <laughs> the walk skipped all the way to the Lee kitchen. Mrs. Lee was overseeing the servants prepare the New Year's feast for her family. The Lees never shared their food with anyone. Little character trait there, right? Greediness. The wok plopped down on the counter. Where did this come from? Asked Mrs. Lee. No one knew. Well, put it to good use, she ordered. It will make a nice serving bowl. So the servants put in the wok festive stir-fried rice, pork dumplings, kung pao chicken, steamed buns, and walnut shrimp. There was still room for more. They added long life noodles, ginger fish, and rice cakes. Yet there, yet still there was room for more. Keep filling it, commanded Mrs. Lee. I must Go change for the party. Wow. All of that delicious food. And they had no plans to share it. No sooner had the servants set the last bit of food in the wok than it jumped out the window. Skippity hoppity ho, to the poor man's house I go, sang the wok as it trotted down the road, brimming with delicious food. The Zhang family could hardly believe their eyes. They gleefully removed the food and set up a big feast. As soon as it was empty, the walk rolled out to their courtyard. Where are you going? cried Ming. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's son I go, sang the walk as it galloped away. So now it's going to go find their son, what do you think is going to happen? Why is it going to the sun? Look at their happy faces.
The walk caught up with the rich man's son, Len, at the market, who, though he had many toys, he never shared them with other children. The walk blocked the road in front of him. What's this? wondered Len. I could use it to hold all my goodies. And without bothering to find the owner, the chubby boy grabbed the walk. Len bought fireworks, toy dragons, cymbals, and drums. He piled them into the walk, and there was still room for more. So he bought lanterns, yo-yos, and kites. Finally, his weak arms grew tired, and he headed home. Hmm. Make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen? When Lan arrived home, he put down the walk and went to find his mother. No sooner had he turned his back than the walk hopped away. Skippity hoppity ho, to the poor man's house I go. It pranced all the way back to the Zang's house with all the goodies safe inside. Ming bounced with joy as he emptied the walk. There are enough toys here for all of my friends, he exclaimed. The walk rolled over to the door and out of their courtyard once again. Where are you going? called Mr. Zhang. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's house I go, sang the walk as it spun down the road. So there's some more greediness versus sharing character traits. And look at the boy looks so happy. The walk arrived at Mr. Lee's shop just as he was counting the money he had cheated out of the poor people of Beijing. It leaped through the window and landed on the counter in front of him. Well, here's a nice pot to hold my money. Mr. Lee put handful after handful of gold coins into the walk and there was still room for more. He dragged out a bag from under his counter and dumped all those coins into it too. All right, what's been the pattern? From what's already happened, you can guess what's gonna happen next, huh? No sooner had Mr. Lee emptied the last of his coins into the walk than it jumped out the window. Skippity hoppity ho, to the poor man's house I go. It scooted down the road all the way back to the Zhang's house with all the money safe inside. Ming and his parents danced with delight. They invited all the poor people in Beijing to their New Year's feast. Mother Zhang served the food. Father Zhang divided the coins up among the families and Ming handed out the toys to all the children. In the middle of the party, without anyone noticing, the walk slid out the door. Hippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's house I go. So very generous in sharing and giving people, right? Shared their food, shared the toys, shared the money. But what is the walk going to do now? Hmm, what do you think? It hopped to the Lee house where the father and mother and their 
spoiled son were weeping and wailing and blaming each other for their misfortune. When they saw the walk, they jumped up. That's the walk that took all our food, cried Mrs. Lee. And my toys, whined the boy. I'll break it for stealing our gold, vowed Mr. Lee. The walk sang out. I dare you three to try and catch me. Oh, look at their faces. They sure do look mad. So he dared them, the walk dared them to chase it. Do you think they're going to? The Lee family chased after the walk. Chubby Lan couldn't make it very far without losing his breath. And Mrs. Lee had trouble running in her fancy shoes. But Mr. Lee finally caught up with it. To stop the walk, he jumped inside, pressing it to the ground. Now I've got you, he growled. Wait for me, called Mrs. Lee. I will teach that walk a lesson. Mr. Lee tried to get up, but found that he was stuck tight. When Mrs. Lee grabbed his legs to pull him out, she slipped into the walk too. Chubby Land finally arrived out of breath. Help, help, pull us out, cried his parents. Land grabbed their legs, but lost his balance and fell inside with them. Oh my goodness, look at them now. Doesn't look like they're teaching the walk a lesson at all, huh? Skippity hoppity ho, too far away I will go, sang the walk as it tumbled down the road with the Lee family inside, legs waving in the air. Dragon dancers' drums boomed, cymbals crashed, and fireworks banged, drowning out the Lee family's cries. No one noticed as the walk sped off to the distant hills. The Lee family was never seen again in Beijing. Look at that celebration. And you can see them in the background there. With all the noise happening, nobody hears them. As for the Zhang family, they opened a shop selling walks of all different sizes and styles. Every year, they hosted a glorious New Year's feast for all of their friends and family. And to think that it all started with a rusted walk with no handle. And at the end, there's an author's note where the author includes some information about the Chinese New Year, a little bit more about its custom and traditions and how the festivities uh, go. And so a little bit of more information about the history or about, uh, about the wok that's used in Chinese cooking. And then on the last page, The author includes that recipe that was mentioned in the story, festive stir fried rice. And it sounds delicious. Maybe one of these days I'll try to make it. All right. So that was the runaway walk. Pretty fun little story. Funny little story, huh? All right. So... Back to our theme. So the theme of this story, 
one thing that I thought of is that um, the way people say what you give is what you get. It's also called karma. So that basically means if you're good, then good things come to you. If you're bad, then bad things come to you. Okay, so that could be one thing. People get people or people uh, get what they give, right? They were the family was poor, but hardworking and generous, and so they got a lot of good things. The Lee family was greedy and stingy, so they got so things were taken away. Bad things happened to them. All right, so that is one thing. Did you come up with a different thing? All right. Hopefully you did. All righty. So hope you enjoyed it. I did. All right. So stay tuned. Check in with me for the next read aloud coming up soon. All righty, guys. So glad you were here today. See you later.